Hello and welcome to another fun-filled edition of Adam's Music Box, where it was on this day, it feels like yesterday, but it was 2017 when the world lost one of the most iconic musicians of all time, Glenn Campbell. Now, Glenn Campbell was someone whose success was both guaranteed and highly unlikely simultaneously. And I'll explain why. <clears throat> on the one hand, he had so so, so much talent that it would be hard to imagine a world in where someone with that much talent wouldn't eventually get the recognition they deserve. On the other hand, he was someone whose unusual collaborations, whose unexpected collaborations, thrust him in to the front line of the newest and most exciting pop music of the era. And that was something that you wouldn't entirely see from his career. He was born as a country boy and a country and Western musician through and through, which was a genre that while always was consistent in its sales, until the 90s and Garth Brooks, it was never pop music. There were, of course, lots of country artists who did cross over, Kenny Rogers, Dolly Parton being just two examples. But the biggest example of all was probably Glenn Campbell. And in that sense, he did kind of blaze a trail. But there was much more to him than that. When he first recorded his initial debut, which is a tautology, um, it was an album that featured his guitar work because he was a virtuoso of guitar. And Every guitar player knows this. Uh, he should absolutely be mentioned in the same breath as people like Eddie Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, John McLaughlin, Alan Holdsworth, Al Damiola. He is a shredder. And not only that, he's incredibly accurate, a great reader, a great session musician, which takes such discipline and such knowledge of your instrument that um, even though the general public might remember him more as a kind of singer, um, and an and entertainer with his own television show and all, he was a sh one hell of a shredder at guitar. Um, his fortunes improved. They were they, he was always well respected and well loved. Uh, but his fortunes really improved in terms of pop stardom when he began to collaborate with one of my favorite songwriters of all time, the great and very much still living Jimmy Webb. And the first collaboration they did, Wichita Lineman, was one that was. It, it took the world by storm because it introduced the world to Jimmy Webb's highly sophisticated songwriting. It was the kind of songwriting that at the one at the, on the one hand was so very accessible, but on the other was so compositionally sophisticated that it's the kind of thing that appealed to the urban and urbane and the honest and salt of the earth. I'm using these terms loosely, but the point is it appealed to everyone. And that really began a decades long collaborational partnership between Jimmy Webb and Glenn Campbell. Uh, they did so many great ones together. Where's the play? Ground Susie, A Lament of Lost Childhood Love, Galveston, a song originally recorded by Don Ho, interestingly, but made very, very famous by Glenn Campbell. Johnny Rivers did a great version too. Um, and there were just so many, too many to mention collaborations between Jimmy Webb and Campbell in terms of songwriting, in terms of live performance. One of one of the performances, and there have been many performances of this, that shows off both his great singing ability and Glenn Campbell's wonderful shredding ability is when he performs Jimmy Webb's MacArthur Park and puts in a hard rock guitar solo, which is really in many ways the best example of Glenn Campbell playing what would generally be classed as hard rock guitar, as opposed to the sort of more country-derived guitar of your Chet Atkins. But he could play it all, jazz too. There was no kind of guitar he couldn't play. And I would definitely YouTube those videos because there's several of him and Jimmy Webb doing MacArthur Park, and you'll really see in his full glory just how great he is. He, of course, worked with many other songwriters uh, around 10 years after Wichita Lineman. He had Rhinestone Cowboy, which was equally legendary. He had his own TV show. He played around the world and was beloved literally everywhere. L.A. and Nashville, London and Paris, everywhere. And 
when he died, it was sad because by then his he had he had a, a, a cranial of sort of mind mental illness where he started to lose his memory more and more. And it's ironic that I don't remember the name of that illness, but um, he still continued to perform even after he was well into uh, the degenerative stage of that disease. And he died peacefully in 2017, leaving behind an absolute amazing legacy of creative songwriting partnerships, of guitar virtuosity, of singing that both warms and soothes the soul, and of someone that really just made everyone feel things are going to be okay. Glenn, Glenn Campbell could make you happy because he could do it all, whether with the Beach Boys or Jimmy Webb or with the stars of Nashville or being behind the scenes on some of the most important guitar tracks ever. A true Renaissance man, someone who crossed over from one genre into every genre and it was really impossible to hate Glenn Campbell. Really easy to love him. Like, subscribe, and we will see you next time. Take care.